Hi everyone, it's Tanji from Paper Crafting Australia. Happy New Year, welcome to 2021. Super excited to be leaving 2020 behind us and hopefully moving on uh, in a COVID normal kind of way. I know there is still a little bit of it out there, uh, but we are getting on top of it, Australia, and we are moving forward. So welcome to our first card of the month kit tutorial. So for those who haven't seen one yet because you haven't got your hands on one, this is our card of the month kit. It's available from Paper craftingaustralia.com uh, and it is going to be it's a monthly subscription so it will be sent out each month uh, around the 20th of the month depending on when everything arrives and, and gets packed uh, but in your kit you'll actually receive um, plenty of goodies to help you uh, to make some um, cards uh, and lots of extra pieces for you to use in any other kind of card making scrapbooking art projects that you are interested in so while I've got your attention I'll quickly jump in and we will show you what's in the card of the month kit for those of you who haven't seen it yet and don't know what it's all about so in the card of the month kit each month you will get card bases and envelopes, you'll get card stock, you'll get some pattern papers, you'll get some embellishments and ephemera and hopefully some extra little bits and, and pieces along the way. Um, and you obviously have access to this online tutorial and our fantastic craft community who are available on Facebook. So there's a minimum $30 worth of retail product included. We do change the colors and the themes and what contents are in each month. So some months you might find that you get some extra little pieces of ribbon uh, or some extra ephemera and things like that. So the card of the month kit for January is closed. Um, so we've gotten all of those um, kits have gone out um, to all of our fantastic subscribers. I want to thank everybody who's jumped on board for the January kit. The current kit is the February kit. Now that's on sale until the 6th of January and that will be the same each month. So if you miss out this month, if you want to get the March one, it'll be on sale until the 6th of February. So it kind of rolls over each month. There'll be a little bit of time in between where we don't have any kits on sale, um, but they will come uh, on sale around the 20th of each month once we've kind of shipped out the previous month's kits uh, just to be able to keep uh, keep ourselves from not going too crazy and insane. So the card of the month kit um, has, as I said, it's got um, bits and pieces for you to do four card projects. And the card projects, these are just the examples that I did before um, today's tutorial. Uh, so they're also, um, when I go back to the front camera, it's uh, they're in the background uh, for you. So we've got a couple of happy birthdays and a thank you card in there. And these are all using bits and pieces that you will find in your card of the month kit. So uh, for anyone who hasn't purchased the kits before, these are you know kind of an example of what you'll be able to do. There are certainly no rules about crafting. You don't need to make the same projects that we show here. Um, so you can make your own uh, with all of the bits and pieces. And I know we've got a fantastic um, lady who's already used our Craft Noon box. So that's our sister product. It's a little bit bigger uh, and has a few more inclusions in it. And I'll run through that towards the end of the tutorial for you. Um, but Carrie from Carrie's Crafts, give her a little bit of a follow on Facebook. She does some amazing uh, cards and, and art projects. Um, so uh, have a look at that. Uh, you'll find her in our favourites as well. Um, and yeah, Carrie did some cards without our tutorials because the tutorials for the Craft and Inbox haven't started yet. They'll start on, I think it's the 9th or the 10th of January. The kind of date escapes me at the moment. I'm still a little bit foggy headed from last night even though I didn't drink anything. Um, so yeah, you don't have to do exactly what we're doing here, but uh, we're just hoping that you know this will give you a bit of a community, a few pointers, you can change things up, think about who you're making your cards for and tailor them uh, in that way. So without further ado, here is on my work desk at the moment, I've got all of the bits and pieces that came in the January card of the month kit. So you'll see we've got some uh, cards and envelopes. So these are, um, it's a craft envelope, a white envelope and two uh, cream or vanilla, manila, whatever you want to call them, uh, envelopes and the same matching in uh, the card bases. So these ones this month have come pre-scored. So you can um, fold them uh, now with these. Uh, if you're looking at the, the hilly side, so this is where the, the score line actually comes up, that's the inside. So if you are going to take this card and fold it, you, this you'll find that the hilly side, you can't quite see it on there, but this is the, the, the raised surface. You'll fold that over, you'll grab a 
bone folder. Uh, now if you don't have one of these, a butter knife which doesn't have any serrations along the edge can also be uh, a handy tool and you just go along and crease that down. Um, now don't go too hard because you don't want to actually scrape off any of the surface of the card uh, but that's how you will fold your cards. So you've got your four cards and envelopes and I'm just going to pop those to the side while we go through all these bits and pieces. Uh, you've also got some patterned um, papers. So these have all come from the Kayser Craft collection that is called Flower Shop and it's Shop S-H-O-P-P-E. Uh, now we will have these available as the full size pads so it'll have all of the papers included and there's doubles of things uh, and there's a bunch of papers that aren't included in your kit um, that you can, if you wanted to expand on, you really love this colour selection, you can expand on uh, that range. Um, so these are the pattern papers. This one's got a beautiful, you can see the shine on it, it's got a, um, a spot UV gloss print on it. Uh, and these were a couple of extras that are some kind of cut aparts that you can do. So you can cut outside these, trim them down, um, use them on scrapbook pages, whatever you would like to do. They're fantastic little bits and they all coordinate with all the little bits and pieces that you've got in your kit as well. So that's your pattern papers for January. Um, now we've got over here, we have this is also your card stock. So these have been pre-cut for you to the correct size for you to do a mat on your cards. So if I grab one of these examples that we had, so the pink part here is the mat, the border. Um, so you've got the white edge of the card behind. See there, that's the full card. You've got the border or the mat, depends on what you want to call it. You've got your pattern paper and then you've got all your little bits and pieces on top of that. So these borders or mats are already cut to size for you to be able to pop straight onto your card and start working. You've also got a few little strips matching in that cardstock, so you can use those for um, popping into your projects. And you've got a few of these uh, borders or mats for your, uh, your greetings. So I haven't got one here to show you, unfortunately. I don't know why I don't, but in this card, you'll see this little greeting circle, which has got some beautiful gold foiling on it. That you've all got in your... Uh, in your kits. So these fit perfectly behind those kind of things. Uh, and this is a two inch circle, I believe. Yeah, <laughs> just wanted to double check. Uh, so these are about two and a quarter inches. Um, so that, that um, that's in your pack as well. You've got this card here, which is your sentiments. So these kind of match in with your greetings. And I don't know why my camera's decided it doesn't. I don't know, it sometimes looks like it's not focusing, but it is. So we'll see how we go. Um, so these you can just cut apart. You can trim them with a paper trimmer. Um, you can edge the sides of them with an ink pad if you would like to have a, um, a, a coloured uh, side or you can leave them white. It just depends on your personal preference. Uh, but these are just little bits to pop under things like your, uh, your greeting block. You can pop a sentiment that says, happy birthday. On your special day so you just cut that strip out and I'll show you how we do that uh, when we go through the tutorial so these are available in our uh, online store so at papercraftingaustralia.com and as we go through each of the kits and boxes each month we'll actually be adding more and more um, and different um, different themes to those so that you'll see those come through these are oops here on the table uh, our greeting blocks. These will be going in the shop again uh, later today or this week uh, now that the craziness of Christmas is gone. So you've got um, again a, a UV embossed kind of um, raised surface on both the thank you and the happy birthday uh, rectangles and this one the square one is just a flat one so we were just trialing a few different things so I'd really be awesome if um, if people tell me which ones you prefer or which ones you think you'd use the most um, that would be really helpful to us and also if you've got other greetings that you would like to see um, drop us a drop us a line pop a comment uh, in the, the video and um, and let us know we're all about feedback so we want to make products that you guys want to use so give us a give us a holler Got a couple of little pieces of ribbon and uh, and twine in here uh, for this month. So I'll show you in a little bit how to make a nice bow because with 20 centimeters of material, sometimes people do struggle a little bit with those. Uh, we've got some beautiful rhinestone embellishments again from Kaiser Craft. Um, so these ones we came in silver 
uh, this month. And we will, over the next few months, we'll actually be build, build, building up a few different colors for you. Uh, but if you ever go crazy with the embellishments and you run out, by all means, jump onto our store. Um, and if we haven't got something in stock, let us know and we will order that in for you straight away. Now, these are just some little cutout embellishments that we've done with the coordinating cardstock. So matching into all the colors that we had in these bits and pieces. Um, so we've got a few of these little bits and bobs. So some hearts and some stars, just something to add to the collection of things that you could make. And these bits and pieces, again, you've got a, a lovely envelope with some Lucky Dip extras in. Um, so they had, um, I'll just pop these out. So they had all these kind of little bits and pieces in them. Let's shake them back in. Um, so you've got some sentiments and greetings in there. Um, you've got border um, type pieces. There are some little tags. Um, people like to do that and add the, the little piece of string or something to that. Um, these are little, uh, they're like the little um, folder toppers, you know, like if you put in a, a filing cabinet um, and you actually fold those in half um, and then glue them onto a page. But you can use those um, if you wanted to add something to pull out of a card and make a little pocket and things like that, um, or just to glue on and have as a, a little piece that hangs off your card. So they're kind of handy as well. Got more little greetings and things in here, lots of happy birthdays. Um, these um, filing tab things, I also you just cut them off, make them a different shape, all good. Um, so plenty to play with. Oh, there's a loose piece of cardstock. <laughs> you never know what you're going to find in amongst all of my stuff. So the, the toughest problem, I suppose, today is choosing a color to work with. Now, I seem to have quite a few little blue bits, and sometimes this is a, a handy way to kind of work out what you're going to do is to sort them a little bit into colors um, because we do have you know some coordinating colors for things that um, have arrived in our kits now you can also just wing it and they all fit together um, you can make what you want um, however you want but I'm gonna have a quick look I'm gonna do two cards today and we'll go fairly quickly um, but let's see what we might do. I like a bit of a happy birthday, may all of your dreams come true. And that's using these um, bits that have come in the kit. So I think if I do a pinky card, then I'm probably going to want maybe, oops, missed, get some of these ones. And then I think we should do something that's a little bit less feminine. And I don't make a lot of girly feminine cards, so um, you'll often find me struggling when it comes to the the pretty floral kind of things. You'll see me work a little bit better when it comes to things like um, an abstract or a rainbow colour palette or something like that. Um, but let's go down the road of this kind of greeny, greeny type thing. So I'm just going to pop all of these. And this is the one that... I mean, it's not it's not so much, but it's a nice contrast to that green. So it's not quite the same. Uh, and a bit similarly with this one is the pink and the reds all kind of going together, but they don't, it's not matchy-matchy, um, if that makes sense. So I like these green tones. Um, cool. All right. That might be all that I use on these cards, but we'll see how I go. Okay, just need to clear a bit of space here, guys. Just two seconds. All right, so let's work with, oh, that's an envelope, not a, not a card. So I've got one of the beige or manila um, cardstock uh, pieces here. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, quickly fold that down. So again, the raised side up. So that we can make sure that that score line is fine and there will come a time with these kits guys where we won't give you pre-scored cards so we'll actually be showing you how to score your cards um, on your own so what I will do is I'm not going to put everything together um, and glue it all down 
right this second, but I'm going to play around a little bit with the elements that we had um, and, and see what I think I might make out of this kind of stuff. So that just gives me a little bit of extra time. So rather than gluing it down and then mucking around with some things and then you go, oh, actually, I don't really like that the way it is. I'm just popping this little frame out of here. So these have got little pull apart tabs. Um, so I'm just going to pop this out because I've just had an idea that this might fit around the happy birthday greeting. It might not, so it might backfire on me, but you don't know unless you try. So just gently pulling apart these little pieces. Now before I pop that out completely, look at that. It actually fits. <laughs> so I'll keep going with that. That will be a nice little addition to my front. It's almost like a little photo Polaroid picture frame. I like that. Um, and I might just need to cut this down once I pop it in. Um, but first I am going to get rid of all of these little burrs because they do look a bit messy and unfortunately there are a lot of them. But I've just got my little paper scissors and I'm just gently holding them against the edge and just cutting those little burrs. The other thing I have seen done, and it's harder with this kind of thinner paper, is to use a small scrap piece of um, sandpaper and you can actually just sand them back. Um, or I guess you could use a nail file or you know that kind of thing. I thought I had something closer, but I don't think it's as close as I thought it was. Alrighty, so I'm just cutting these on the outside. The tricky ones are going to be the ones on the inside um, because you've got to get your scissors in there and do it carefully so that you don't bend all of this paper. I've already got a couple of little bends in that. All right, here we go. So I'm going to try and do, probably not going to do it so well. It's also that thing of which hand is your dominant one. So you might have to flip things over so that um, my scissors run in a particular way that I can get closer if I cut this way. We're getting there, we're making progress. So everybody jump into the, the chat and the notes and let me know where you're from. Um, I know where you're all from because I've posted out boxes to you, but um, it's, it would be great if everybody could kind of introduce yourself and have a bit of a, a chat, meet everyone. You are going to see each other or at least see each other's comments uh, in your tutorials every month. So um, it's kind of nice to see people getting along and sharing hints and tips. And you might even find that some of you live fairly close to each other. Um, Australia can be, for a big country, it can be very small world. Um, so yeah, jump in, let me know where you're from. As most of you are probably aware, I live in Melbourne. Um, I live in the western suburbs. And um, yeah, we're in the process of building a new house further out west. So in a little while I'll be getting a brand new craft room uh, and that will be lovely. So I've cut all of those burrs off to the best of my ability and there's still a few little rough bits there, but I think we'll live with that. Um, so from here, I've got, let me grab a little pencil, just so that I can mark. Now, obviously I can cut further in from where I'm going to mark this, but for the moment, if I just draw, oops, without drawing on the, pretty card. Just draw a little pencil line around the outside of this and then I can cut inside it and then I know I'm definitely going to have that white edge hidden underneath that border. There we go. All right. Cut a little bit further in. Again, just paper scissors. You don't need to use anything too crazy. Cool. 
I'm actually putting things in the bin as I go today, which might, <laughs> might be helpful. Okay, so I can kind of, oh, might need to take a little bit, a little bit extra off both sides, just to make sure that we're underneath it. Nothing fancy going on here. Beautiful. So I've got my little kind of Polaroid type spot. Now, depending on how I want to lay this out, because we've also got some pattern paper that we can use. I think something like this might be pretty. Again, I'm not great with pretty, but it's hard to kind of fit those windows in. So unless I was going to tip it sideways, I'd probably have to incorporate those windows somehow. I'm not really sure I want to do that. Beautiful paper, but I don't think it's right for this part of the project. What if... What is Is this too much of the same kind of same old, same old colour underneath? I think, it, yeah, that doesn't stand out very well. What if we put green? Because there, there is pink in these flowers that will kind of pick up off that. What do we think? Might be able to cut that down. Okay. All right, so I'll give you a few measurements at this point in time. So if you are making or trying to make these cards without the kit, um, you want to going to want to cut your card base. Now I've got some inches and some centimeter dimensions there for people so that you can kind of work both ways depending on how you how you like to be. Um, so eight and a quarter by five and thirteen sixteenths of an inch and then scoring the card at four and one eighth of an inch if you're working this way. So you'll score here. Then if you're working as uh, centimetres, so it'll be a 21 centimetre by 14.8 centimetre cut of cardstock. And then you'll score at 10.5 centimetres along here. Now then when we've cut these mats and borders, these are, oh, that's not very straight, but that'll, you'll live. Um, so these mats are three and three quarters by five and seven sixteenths or 13.8 centimetres by nine and a half centimetres for those working in Aussie measurements. Um, so that that fits in and gives you a bit of a border, um, nice even border around the edge of your card. Now when it comes to our patterned paper, you can work to any dimensions you like, but these are the ones that I'm working to uh, with these cards today. So I'm just going to grab my paper trimmer. And this is a really cheap paper trimmer. Um, and I've got it back front, so that's handy. Um, and it's got... <laughs> It's got some very helpful uh, mis disappearing measurements here. So I know that I can't do anything between sort of two and, th two and three quarters and, and four and a half, um, three and a half, sorry. So um, luckily my pattern paper for this side is going to be three and a half. So just make sure that you've got your paper the way that you want it to be. So if you're going to cut the three and a half, it's, it's kind of, you know, a little bit narrower than that. So if that is what you're going to cut off there, is that the way you want your paper pattern to go? Or do you want these flowers to lay over a little bit more horizontally? Um, for me, I'm going to go a little bit vertically, but just check your paper uh, before you cut it. It's much easier than cutting it and then realizing later that you <laughs> have stuffed it up. Uh, so that's the three and a half. And this way is five and three sixteenths to three. Now, if you don't have one of these paper trimmers, this was from Kmart. It was about six or seven dollars, so it was super cheap. You don't have to have anything mega fancy, um, just whatever does the trick. But you can also use scissors and draw um, a couple of pencil lines on the back of the paper, and it's great that this one is only single sided because it's easy to see on the back. Um, but if you don't, um, or you prefer instead of scissors, you want a nice clean line. I am a little bit partial to a, a craft knife and a, a steel ruler um, if I'm doing um, you know, any finicky cuts, uh, but it's totally up to you whatever works best and whatever you've got the tools for. So don't panic that you have to buy every little piece of uh, materials. 
So if I start to build up my card so I can just see how it's starting to look. And again, you might have different colored papers. You might have a blue border and some of the blue and white paper in there. You can have anything you like. I've got this little cheeky Polaroid that I kind of like and I want to sort of put it up a little bit um, in there because I think I'm going to use this May All of Your Dreams Come True in here and pop it across, across the card. But then I might, so I've got hands going everywhere. I do also really like these little scalloped bits that um, come in the, the Kayser Craft kits and I like kind of using them as a bit of a ledge. Um, it kind of reminds me of, you know, like a windowsill. Um, and so that's kind of how I've been using all of these. Um, and what I might do is pop this up onto a little bit of um, foam tape so it sits a little bit higher and we can kind of put some bling around the edges of this little frame. Um, now I know in the kits there's some of these that are pink and there's some that are, are blue. Um, so you can kind of do this Polaroid effect, just take out the little bit that's in the middle of that. Um, if you're not so keen on your tearing abilities, um, if you've got a craft knife, and mine's done a runner on me, don't know where it's gone, um, you can just use your craft knife to gently just cut those little sprues in the middle um, and that will that will give you a nice clean um, cut as well. So if you don't trust yourself to tear, um, that's a little tip that you can use. So I'm just going to clean up these little pieces that I've finally decided to use. Oops. The straight edges are generally fairly good. It's of course the curved ones that want to be a bit of a nightmare and a mess. Do, do, do. And of course you can decide to just leave them on if you want to leave them on as well. Um, I'm not a massive fan. I like clean lines and neat and tidy and I kind of like I love my cards to look like I've made them, but I like them to look like they could possibly have been commercially bought as well. It's a tough combination <laughs> to get right. So did anybody have anything amazing happen for New Year's Eve? I had a very quiet one um, and it was just my boyfriend and my mum who had come over from South Australia and her two little dogs and we had complete maniacs around us who decided to let off the equivalent of about 10 ton of fireworks. Uh, it was quite insane. So it wasn't so great because one of the dogs got very scared um, and yeah it just puts everybody on edge a little bit when there's a bit of chaos going around. It's not fun. All right. Now, don't forget, guys, the good thing about these tutorials being um, online is that you can, and, and pre-recorded, is that you can pause at any time. Pause, write a comment, ask a question, um, rewind and go, what was she talking about then? Or what, what, what did you do with that bit? I didn't quite see if I go a bit faster, you know. It's the easiest way to do it because you can just rewind, go back, have another crack at it, which I really like. Okay, so I'm pretty much ready to start gluing things down now. So I have a little bit of a preference um, with using a tape runner. Um, so this is just a little handheld machine, Duvalaki, um, and these ones, I just get it uh, Big W and Officeworks and they're only you know six or seven dollars and you can get refills for them. Often I can't get the refills so I have to buy the whole thing all over again which is a dollar or so more expensive um, but lots of people and lots of companies sell these kind of products so depending on how strong a grip of tape you want um, you can use those. Um, the other things people like to use at the moment are glue pens. Um, so that's where you've got, and this one probably won't work straight away, but um, 
because it, it'll be blocked. I haven't cleaned it since I used it last. Um, but it gives you a nice, even application for liquid glue. And for people who like to be able to wiggle things around a little bit because you don't plonk it in the right spot first go, um, liquid glue is fantastic and you can, um, you know, it gives you a few seconds extra to, um, to be able to manipulate that into place. Um, now with this card, there's a side that's a little bit less textured than the other and it's super hard to see on camera, but you might be able to pick up a little bit of the texture there and then not so much of it there. So decide which side of the card you want to use. Now, if you've got a, a few little rough kind of edges that have, are kind of a little bit more, uh, they kind of kicked up a little bit where the trim has happened, um, you can just go back over those with your bone folder um, and that will flatten them back down so that they look nice and even. And you'll also find with some of our cuts, because we use every last skerrick of paper and cardstock that we can, you might occasionally come across a barcode or something on the back side of some of your cardstock pieces. Now, this is um, fine because you're going to use just one side of it in most applications, um, but we do try to limit the number of pieces that we put in that have those on. But also, we don't want paper and cardstock going to waste. So where we can use a little strip like this, and you know, you could use this to cut out some little die shapes if you've got some dies and machines at home that you use. Um, we just want to make sure that we're kind of not throwing out useful cardstock. Um, so where this kind of application, we would be looking at sticking it onto the front of a card and not making it a double-sided, um, you know, we're not going to send you a piece of cardstock to make a card base and put a piece of card in it that's got a barcode on it because obviously that's not going to look pretty um, but we will use it for these kind of pieces that we're using as embellishments and stuff so don't panic but always look for it um, just so that you don't kind of glue something and then flip it over and go oh oh now the barcode's showing up I know you wouldn't use that on a finished piece so all good alrighty just gonna double check that this is all nice and firm and then I'm going to place a bit of this tape runner so as you can see it's just popped a little bit of um, it's very thin um, adhesive on my card I haven't gone all the way to the edges completely you know you're not kind of trying to do that now what this does is using the liquid glue if you use too much liquid glue you can warp your cardstock so this kind of eliminates that um, that problem um, but you do need to be a little bit more accurate when you're laying down your cardstock. Now at the moment it looks like my cardstock's stuck but it's actually not. I've just kind of floated it down on top just so I can make sure that it's in the right spot before I pop it all down. So now that's adhered and that's not gonna go anywhere. Cool. Um, so I'll pop down my next layer which is my pattern paper. Again this has got a bit of a a raised edge on it from my paper trimmer. Easy fixed. Work out which way up we're gonna go. Same, same. Sometimes they're not. A little bit of glue. And again, I like to kind of hold this over, hover it over. On the edge and hold it on the edges and you can kind of look around that piece of card and without me getting my head like completely in here <laughs> there's my part that's nice um, you can kind of see if you're kind of close to having it even and then you can just shuffle it around now the border between your mat and the pattern paper is smaller so it is a bit a bit more of a tricky one. If you don't like it that that small, you can cut your pattern paper um, a little bit smaller again. Uh, but you'll start to find that things like these cards will start to look too big for um, your card. So, for example, this one doesn't quite go particularly nicely on a portrait card, but it will go quite nicely on a landscape card. Cool. All right, so I'm going to need to stick this down. And what I might do is actually see if my 
I'll see if this glue pen will actually work for me. Yeah, here it comes. <laughs> I was like, it's going to do one of two things. It's either going to spurt out everywhere or not come out at all. And I've just found an air bubble in it, so I'll just shake it down a little bit. Um, yeah. Oh, here it goes. So a little bit of this. Now I want to kind of smoosh that out a bit because that is a little bit too much to have under this tiny little piece of paper. You only need a little, a little bit goes a long way. Great. So just sit that over here. Thought I might have been doing that off camera, but not quite. Now I don't want to stick this to my work surface, so I'm just going to pull this up fairly quickly and flip it over now that I've got it in position now that I've just moved it um, but that liquid glue as you can see I've still got a little bit of wiggle room with it so if I haven't got it in exactly the right spot I can adjust that great so I'm gonna pop that on a little bit of a, an angle and I'm kind of happy that that's there I can pop this down okay so I might need to swap that a little bit to the left so that I can fit this in it's not a problem if it runs across onto the pink border, but that's not how I want it to look. So I'm just going to have it a little bit this way. And then I only want this to go down on the bottom because I want to pop that up in the middle. Okay, so flip this over. Give this one a bit of, bit of tape as well. Secure that down. Give this one a little bit of tape, or you might want to. Whoops! With some of these little finicky bits, sometimes it's easier to use your liquid glue. There we go. Now this may all of your dreams come true. I'm actually going to find a couple of little foam dots. Now these are really little ones. Um, those who did the trial of the Crafternoon box and the kit in October will know all about these tiny weeny ones, which they're really helpful for little tiny things, but <laughs> They're not, they're not easy to get the backings off uh, and for someone like me who has very little in the way of fingernails there's a fair bit of cursing that normally goes on. Cool. Oh, ah, oops, get rid of you. A couple more. These were the least favourite items in the, the, the trial kit, and I know why. I don't blame you all. Okay. So I'll just pop that there. Okay. Now I did say before I was going to show you all how to tie a great bow. Before I do that, I'm going to pop this on the inside. There is nothing that says in card making that you can't put any of your pieces on the inside. In fact, I might even go so far as to do something like that. Or you could attach this to the outside of an envelope and do something like that and pop a couple of embellishments on it. That would be lovely as well. Um, I like to do things that are a little bit outside of the norm. Um, not very normal. So I'll find a spot for this in the middle there. And that's something that people aren't expecting anything on the inside of a handmade card. So that's just something different. I did one on, of course it's the last one. 
on this card um, and no one's seen the inside of that yet but I popped a little sentiment on there as well bloom as if you want to make the whole world beautiful um, so that was just something you know to put on the inside just to use up some of those pieces um, and just to add a little bit more of a special touch for the recipient okay back to the front and back to tying a bow so 20 centimeters of ribbon is all you should need to make a bow for the front of a greeting card so the best way I've found uh, and I have uh, a, a lovely lady called Rose Packer to thank for this um, Rose uh, was one of the first teachers who taught me how to do paper crafting um, a number of years ago but so Rose's idea is to find the middle of the ribbon give it a little bit of a pinch so that you can kind of see that's where the middle is and then on either side of that ribbon, you want to make a couple of loops, like so. Now you can make them quite big. You're just going to need to get hold of them. Um, and what you do with those two loops is you actually tie them in a knot. So if you do that and tie that, you'll then need to adjust your little hanging outy bits but that gives you a cute little bow and you can kind of muck around with how they've pulled through and what size it is. So if you want to make it a bit smaller, just pull those through, give it a gentle tug again. Um, obviously the smaller you want your bow to be, the smaller you need to make your pieces to start with because then when you pull it to tighten it, they do, um, they do lengthen. So that is how you get a little bow. So if you've missed that, replay, rewind and rewatch that. So you make the two little bows, almost like a shape of an M, letter M, and then tie the two loops in a knot. And then you've got your little, little bow. So I think I'm going to glue my little bow down here. Of course, I probably don't want them, the tails hanging out quite that long, so I'm just going to give them a little haircut down here. And this one take off here so that I can kind of size it up a little bit get rid of my little scraps and then that one will definitely be a, um, a liquid glue to adhere it because it is a little bit more solid than paper you can get glue runners and double-sided tape that is strong um, and you can um, use that actually I'll pop the glue directly onto my project so that it's not kind of crazy now this will take a little, oops, a little bit longer to dry um, because I've done a fairly big blob just clean up that little bit that I've messed up um, but it will make sure that your bow stays attached to your project so that's the first card that I've made for you for today so I'd love as you finish your projects um, and finish watching your tutorials jump onto our Facebook page at Paper Crafting Australia and share your share your pieces with us um, because that's what it's all about. It's everybody's got the same ingredients, but let's see what kind of cake we can all make. Um, they're all different. I mean, this card is very different to this, and this is using almost exactly the same pieces, if you like. So there's a bow on these ones. There's a little a greeting. There's oh, I haven't put sparkles on this one. Oh well, that's <laughs> that's no big problem. Um, but there's pattern paper. There's a border. There's do you know what I mean? It's it's all the same kind of pieces, but they are two very different looking cards. So jump on uh, and, yeah, share your pieces with us. Um, this is what it's all about. You'll see somebody else's ideas and you'll be inspired to kind of have a go at that, but, it, you know, change it up a little bit to something that's your style. Okay, I'm just going to put this one out of screenshot for the moment. Oops, and my bow has just fallen off. So I might just... Here's a trick I use to kind of get these little three-dimensional tricky bits to actually hold on is I take an acrylic stamp block and just pop it on top of that and it just gives it that little bit of weight and pressure so that while that glue is drying it's kind of all holding together. I'm actually going to put that up there because otherwise it'll be on my keyboard and we might push buttons that we don't want to. <laughs> all right let's not try and take up too much time making this next one. So for this next one, I'm going to use the craft colored card stock. And so 
we've got the idea of burnishing these score folds now. So that's that one ready. I'm going to use some of our sentiment strips on this one because none of my examples used that. I'm going to use the green to go with the rest of the theme that I've got there. Um, and I think I might make this another thank you. What did I do with this one? Maybe some pattern paper. What about something like that underneath? It's a little bit more or a little bit less um, girly, if we like. Thank you. Cool. And I might pop another ribbon on that one and I'll make that out of the tiny little white string that I've got floating around. I was thinking that I might put a, an extra strip under here, but we might see how that goes. Alrighty. This one should be fairly quick and simple. So again, I've got my paper trimmer out and I'm going to cut this way at three and a half inches or nine centimeters for those playing in centimeters. Chop that. And this way, five and two, three sixteenths. Somewhere there. Oh, and before I do run away with that, I'm going to cut out I'm going to cut out the for everything um, to pop in with my um, with my greeting, my thank you. So thank you for everything. So with these, just find a spot cut across. And again, this is the tricky way. I'll go this way because I've got a little bit more to hang on to. But again, if you don't have a paper trimmer to get a nice even cut, um, you can measure and then put pencil marks on the back. They're single-sided so that you can do that kind of thing and, uh, and go from there. I'm going to cut this one fairly long, even though it's not going to help me that much, but it just means that I can kind of match the distance on this end with the distance on this end of the, the text. Otherwise, you've got this kind of lopsided type of extra bit of black space uh, on the side. That could be, for some of you, that could be totally fine because you might want to pop a, a, um, a rhinestone uh, on there. Um, for me, I'm just going to, I'm not going to embellish the sentiment strip, so I am just going to chop a little piece off to match. Or roughly. Again, we want people to know that it's handmade, but we don't want them to think it's dodgy. Okay. Let's have a look at the rough bit here. So the techniques that we're working on today is really just layering um, and just learning what the layer build-up looks like. Um, so it's about kind of eyeballing things and having a look, putting pieces on and then going, nah, I don't like that, I like this, or, you know, what have you. So for me, for this little piece here, that's where I've started and I'm kind of wondering do I put a belly band across here and I'll need to trim that down because it's a little bit long to put my thank you on and then if I pop this do I put it in the middle do I put it across kind of to one side do I hang it down the bottom do I pop it halfway over halfway over I think looks nice um, it's just a little bit tricky and then if we've got this tag and we pop a, a, a bow do we put that there or do we slide this all down and pop it up here and that might be okay as well now there's also nothing to say that this has to kind of sit within the boundaries of the mats and the borders it might sit further out um, but I think what I might do now I'm going to use something that's come up it's it's in the Craftanoon box 
Um, and part of the benefits of getting the Crafter Noon box is that it comes with an ink pad. Um, so it comes with some more pieces than the, the card of the month kit. So um, it comes with either a small, this is an ink cube, or a larger ink pad. Um, so people choose that when they uh, subscribe. But I'm going to just use this to just dirty up these edges a little bit. And I'm just literally taking the ink pad and brushing it straight onto the cardstock. And I'll get these little marks. So it's, it's colouring the edge so the edge is no longer white, um, which is one of my pet peeves with these black sentiment strips. And I would normally edge that. But there's a bit of white going on on this card anyway, so I don't mind it so much. It's when you do a full colour card um, that the edges of those being white and not black does kind of bother me a little bit. So I'm just scraping this. And look, the further over you hold these um, inks, the more smudging you'll get on the card. So it depends on how distressed and you know how involved you want your ink to be. Um, but I just find it just gives it, particularly on something like this, which is just white to the edges, it just looks a little bit clinical um, and not quite how I would like it. But you do you if it's what you like and that's your style and you will over time develop a bit of a style of crafting. Um, you just keep going until you're happy with it. So for me, that is the point where I say enough. <laughs> so you can see... Um, there's quite a few kind of bits that have come in off the edges as well as just the edge being um, a bit browned up. And I just think that stands out a little bit more than when you put something like that on there with nothing. It's just a little bit of an added extra. It is also um, kind of, I think, reminiscent of having this type of border around the outside of the circle on the other card. So that's, I think how it's going to land for this card. So I'll cut this down to the right size. We'll pop this tag up here. I'll make another bow out of this. And then, okay, here we go again. So make the two, the two M's, so it's like a shape of an M. Make it a little bit bigger because I can't get my fingers in. Um, so it's like an M. Come back here, you. And then just tie these two loops together. It can be a bit tricky, um, but you'll get them eventually. And the more you practice, the better you'll get. Now, this twine is quite plasticky, so it doesn't hold very tightly. Um, you do need to give it a real good reef um, to get it to, to go where you want it to. Um, so don't be afraid to give it a real tug. Um, and I will pop, chop a couple of these bits off. Okay. I think we're kind of ready to pop things together. I'll just trim this bit down. Just going to eyeball this a little bit. not the best thing to do but it'll fit within that and that will be clean enough just making sure that the little circle bit in that tag is kind of can see it I'm gonna end up putting my bow on it anyway but that's just a nice little pocket um, I'm gonna clean up this thank you because I'm gonna pop this one inside my card kind of like I did with the other one Now, if you've ever got this happen with your cards where there's just a tiny little bit of a lip um, where the, the fold hasn't kind of worked exactly where you want it, flip it over so that it's on the back side because nobody really looks from the back side. From the front side, no one ever knows that it's not quite matching up here. All right. Glue this little guy down. Whoops. That's nice. Even if you're not giving these cards as 
you're writing in them and giving them to someone, you might make a set of cards and give them to someone as a gift. And that's a really lovely um, present is a, a selection of um, cards that they can then use to give to others. Now, I do have a little bit of a torn piece on this piece of cardstock that I rescued. Um, so I'm actually putting my glue on the back of that and I'm using the least, less textured side this time um, for my, my border. And again, just kind of bending it down in the middle so that I can see that the outside edges are relatively even. Floating it down, making sure it's in the right spot. Whoops, now I've moved it, good work. But see how, because it's not quite sitting down, I can still manipulate it gently. So once I think it's in the right spot, I'll press it down, give it a bit of a rub. Next layer up. So we're just building from the base, the card base, up. A little bit of patterned paper. Lining this one up, remembering that this one is the slightly narrower border around the edge. Oops, missed. Pretty good. Now I just have to eyeball this again to just make sure that where I put this, this is going to float in a good spot, as in it's not going to sit up here and my card, my um, uh, greeting card's going to sit right down the bottom. Um, but I kind of want it to sit roughly in the middle of where this is, but I do need to save space to pop this down the bottom before it falls off the page, and I do need to fit this in at the top. So we're looking somewhere around here, and I'm just going to pop a little pencil mark. I'm going to cover that pencil mark ever so slightly when I pop this down. These are so fast and easy. They, I absolutely love them. All right. Making sure that that's hopefully straight. And then we can pop this greeting block on. Now, if you want to hold this piece in position while you kind of work out which way this is, if you've only got the edge of the card kind of touching the card to slide it along, you're not actually getting the, the um, glue stuck down yet. So um, that's a little bit of a trick. So these is about halfway down, and then I'm happy to stick that there. Pop my little tag. You know what, just before I do that, I'm going to just ink the edges on this. I'm going to get sticky fingers in the back, but I think this just needs a little bit of darkening around the edges um, so that it stands up off the brown and white um, timber whitewashed kind of look in the background. And it'll give it, tie it in a little bit just with um, the rest of the card that's on there. Cool. There we go. Now I can kind of see it a bit better sticking up off there. And I'm going to use liquid glue for this one because this is quite thick and heavy cardstock. Um, I feel like we might try and order the next lots in in a slightly thinner card just because it is a little bit heavy. Um, but it, I do also like that it gives a bit more dimension. Oops, I've just put my finger in all the glue. Um, all right, so I'm just gonna hang this over the edge. It'll adhere more to the top layer, so to the card, uh, than to the bottom edge, but I've got the glue there just in case we manage to get it to tilt and it does pick up and hold. Okay, so that's that bit there, and then a little spot of glue up here for this little bow. So I'll pop that on there. Okay, now we didn't use any rhinestones before, so I think I need to break those open and pop a couple on here. 
Right, where do we think? I've got my tweezers at the ready. <laughs> um, so I might grab a couple of these little, whoops. Ah! Always happens. Great. Pop a little one in here. Oh, it's upside down. Pop a big one on there. If it was a warmer day, they'd probably s s slide a little bit easier. And then I'll try and get a middle sized one. Preferably with its little bit of sticky stuff. Ugh. There we go. Pop those there. There's a little bit of an unofficial rule of three when it comes to embellishing on a card, um, but you can do whatever makes you happy. Um, so that's where I'm going to leave that one for today. So if I slide all of these out of the way, I'll bring this other one back down. So here's the two cards that I've made today, and they're going to go along with Oops, you can't quite see them. Let's take these little guys out of the way. I forgot that these really stick to this mat. <laughs> All right, so there's today's cards. There's two, this one and this one from the other day. So they are all made using the same pieces and, and, and whatnot. Um, and they have been able to be done fairly quickly. So if you were kind of trotting out the same design with just different papers and different colors, um, you'd be able to get that done in no time. So I hope they've been fun to create and I hope uh, you enjoy making a few more. Um, I'll just jump back on to my lovely face for you. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for joining me for the first tutorial. Look at the mess that I've made. <laughs> Um, before we go, um, just a quick shout about the uh, February kit and also this is the Crafternoon box. So you can see guys how, um, for those of you who've got it or those who haven't got it at the moment, get off there, this is the difference. So this is the Crafternoon, this is the card of the month kit rather. Um, so quite thin and everything's kind of packed in, um, in a nice cardboard strong folder so that the postie doesn't put that into the mailbox and bend it. Um, and this is the craft and moon box so much much more in it um, and as I said before it comes with things like stamps and dies uh, and ink pads uh, to build a, a bit more of a, a collection. Um, if you're happy with the card of the month kit that's absolutely okay. Um, you may only have room for four cards and the supplies that go with that um, so that is okay um, but if you're wanting to look at upgrading or building your supplies um, then the Crafternoon box uh, is an, a great option for you. So if you have not bought the card of the month kit uh, but you would like to get involved now that you've seen what we're doing uh, from the January tutorial uh, this is what's in the February card of the month kit. So you'll again get some card bases and envelopes and this uh, month we're going to be using some slimline card bases uh, and we'll also have some Gina K Designs paper um, uh, cardstock card bases and envelopes. Um, so they're on the right hand side in that image there. Uh, we'll also have uh, the pattern papers that you can see at the top. So it's a pack of 12 pattern papers and they are just under the size of the A2 card bases. So they are perfect for being able to just cut the tiniest amount off each edge and uh, you'll be able to fit them onto your cards uh, as we've done today with the layering. Um, there's also some glittery cardstock in there. There's some pink rhinestones. Uh, there is some, uh, you've got some uh, white and silver twine and some pink ribbon. Um, and we'll be focusing on, there'll be some other little um, bits of ephemera, but um, they haven't been photographed and popped into that for you because it's a little bit, um, a little bit of a make it up as we go along for that part, but you will get some extras. Um, the glitter cardstock, so some white snowy glitter cardstock there. You also get a tutorial uh, and access to the online craft community um, through our Facebook page. So if you haven't joined that yet, uh, join Paper Crafting Australia on Facebook. You can also look up our YouTube, which is where you'll find the home of all of our tutorials. Um, if the card of the month kit isn't enough to get you excited, 
Um, this is what's in the Craft and Noon box for February. So in the Craft and Noon box, uh, you'll receive a, um, the same kind of things that we get in the Card of the Month kit. You will make different projects from them. So if you want to be greedy and you want to craft a lot, you can, of course, purchase the Card of the Month kit and the Craft and Noon box. But the Craft and Noon box is going to include your choice of an ink cube, either in, uh, sorry, an ink pad in the ink cube or ink pad size. Uh, you'll get the uh, Gina K Designs card bases and envelopes and the Slimline card bases and envelopes. You'll get the 12 patterned papers um, and you'll have the Paper Rose die set, which is uh, the set of three love hearts. And they will be used to make a shaker card. So along the bottom, the last three items that you'll see there, there are some little sequin hearts, uh, sorry, sequin stars. There are some uh, poly, uh, polymer clay love hearts in a red, pink and white um, grouping. And there's also some clear uh, gemstones as well as your pink rhinestones and the silver and white twine and the pink ribbon. Uh, and then there's a, a handful of other cardstock um, that you've got there. So there'll be a, a collection of cardstock that you can use to um, cut out uh, love hearts um, and put onto your pieces and also to help you create the shaker card. Uh, so we'll be making making all of those. So that box retails at um, uh, $50. And it's sixty-five dollars minimum of retail value that goes in that each month. So, like the craft, uh, like the card of the month kit, uh, it does change each month. Um, we will be providing a catch-up kit um, for people who join in a different month to the starting month because. Um, over the 12 months, you will actually build up a, um, a stack of supplies and a lot of the months will actually go back to um, reverting to using some of the products that we might have uh, used from a previous kit. So we're going to put together that pack um, called the Catch-Up Kit. Um, so for this month, there will be the um, craft ink pad uh, that came in craft coloured ink pad that came in the last kit. That was the January uh, craft afternoon box. So they're about to start their tutorials very, very soon. Um, and there'll also be some, I haven't got it at hand, double-sided foam tape. Um, so they were things that came in the January kit that we are going to continually use um, across the next few. Then if you were to join for the March Crafternoon box, we would include um, the, um, the pink ink pads that people are getting in this one. So you would get that plus the brown craft ink pad plus the uh, double-sided foam tape. So as we go along, anything that's kind of considered essential and that we will use a lot of, um, we won't just assume that you've got it. We'll actually add that to the kit. So that is uh, pretty much all that's news um, from us for today. I hope you've enjoyed the first one and sorry that it's gone longer than an hour, not by a lot, but a little bit. Um, but yeah, I, I hope you've had a great time. Um, please jump into the comments, send us messages, um, ask any questions that you need to. We really want to build on this. Tell your friends and family that are crafters as well um, and let them know how great you've um, found this kit. Um, Pop your photos onto the Facebook page and share those with your community. Um, it's super important. Uh, but just a reminder, the um, orders for the kits do close on the 6th of January. So if you are watching this and haven't signed up yet, or if you bought the individual kit and you want to continue with it for next month, jump on, grab your subscription today. And um, yeah, hope you're off to a great start for 2021 and we'll see you again next month. Thanks, everyone.